and like what people might want to want to know um, if they're coming on to this course. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Fergal Ransom, and I'm a third year music production student. So going to finish my degree this year, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> and then uh, if you look at the music I'm most interested in is kind of classical film music, orchestral, you know, more on the recording side of things than any of the electronic production. Mm. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, I like that kind of music too, but I'm mainly more about uh, like folk music and sor sort of more acoustic music, like folk and, and indie sort of music, rock and stuff like that. Um, but I came onto this course to do the same thing, which is just like recording instead of, and like recording other people instead of just like recording my own music as well. Um, yeah, it's, it, I like this course a lot. <laughs> Um, so tell me about your experience so far on the course and like what you've sort of like, like what the best and the worst things have been of it, about it so far. Um, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's I mean, there's, uh, yeah, there's many different things on this course, which have kind of been, I've really enjoyed or, you know, things which I don't think there's anything which I've sat there and gone, I haven't enjoyed it. It's more right. that it's been a I think just with standard university stuff, it's been a challenge and with all challenges, you've got to that point where you want to rip your hair out and you kind, <laughs> yeah. of, you, you kind of end up run, running around university going, I can't do this anymore. I want to go home. Um, right. But yeah, um, there are, there've been a few projects where you want, I've wanted to do that. And that's usually when I've been working with exterior people, usually with um, organizing other people have made me want to kill them. Um, <laughs> right. But no, I mean, I think some of the best things of this course, um, I don't know. Well, well, I think Abbey Road obviously has to go at the top of that list. I don't think I'd be uh, allowed to get away without saying that. Yeah, um, yeah, you've been there. That's so cool. So, yeah, that was a really good experience. And it's it was good to go along to as well, because you kind of notice that everything you're learning on the course is useful in that in that context. Right. So they're not doing anything there which you can't do at the course. You know, they've got, yeah. sure, they've got a massive Neve desk, but they're basically just using that as ins and outs as a, you know, a glorified preamp, really. You know? Right. And so, and you kind of get, yes, they've got lots of very expensive Neumann mics, but, you know, you know, that's just more microphones and we've got a great choice as well. So you kind of get to that once, after you've been there, you kind of come back and go, oh, I, I can do that, actually. Oh, and I've done that. And you realise far much more of it, more than the equipment, is how they how they tend to deal with musicians right. and managing the sessions. So it's mm -hmm. kind of, you walk in, everything's set up, you run through it, and you expect, you know, you expect to be really stressed and everything. But when we went there, it was surprisingly calm. You know, um, even with, you know, even if you've only got two hours to do a recording, the engineers just sit down, they've prepared everything. And even if, I mean, when we went, one of um, our, our um, composer hadn't handed over all his scores. So when they had to do all the editing for that, the engineer, even though it was something complex, he was just like, okay, I've got to do it. I'll sit down and do it. And I think that's a brilliant way of looking at this course in a way is that, yeah, there's lots of extra steps you've got to do and I think just a uni in general, but you've kind of got to sit down and go, you know, I didn't, you know, I don't, I might not enjoy this. It might not be the funnest thing ever. But if I do this and I get it done now, everything afterwards will be far, far easier. Right. Yeah, I see that. I, I feel like it's really interesting to you to like observe um, engineers who have been obviously in this business long enough to where they, they get to be working in Abbey Road so, so like often that they sort of know how to organize such what could be chaos you know and like uh you know like they know they know exactly how to do it after doing it over and over again and and being able to see that you can reach that goal as well is probably yeah. really interesting um yeah. go ahead yeah no, it's just, it, it is nice because you, you don't feel when you're there and equally we do we go to um Valleywood Studios which is run by uh Barclay McKay who's um works who's comes in to talk to us on the course occasionally Right. Um, you know, it's only it's a small home studio in Leeds, but even that you're going along and getting to watch someone working is absolutely brilliant. And you know, one of the things I think that 
you know, this course does stand out from other courses is you kind of got that, you know, and I, you know, I, you know, we were kind of, you know, Ross likes to talk about it on his first day a little bit that, you know, once you're here, you you it's, you call it, you're a music producer. You're not a music student. Right. And that, and when you're talking to other people, especially on the industry days and the symposium, you, you feel a lot more like that. I mean, when you're in this, when you're just doing work and university work, you feel like a student, but when you're out and doing these actual events or doing actually, you know, I enjoy it when I actually get somebody who comes up to me and goes, could you record this for me? Cause that makes me actually feel like it's not just someone going, Oh, I need this doing for my course or just do this random project because it's music. You know, someone's coming up to you and trying to actually respecting you as a person and going, Oh, I think you're good. Can you help me out with this? And that's right. well. far, far more enjoyable. And all the people you meet, even if they've worked at Abbey Road, if they think they're professional, they treat you like a professional as well. And they just chat to you. There's no, I don't think anyone I've met has gone, well, I'm, I'm much better than you. I've done this for many years. I've worked here. They've just gone, okay, yeah, plug that in, do that. And it kind of shows you that it's, there's a lot of in, there's a lot in the detail, which makes them better than you, but that doesn't mean you can't achieve it either. So they're quite, they'll just chat to you and share their points of view with you and everything. Great. Right. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I, I really feel like on this course too, like, like you said, where we're, we're called music producers instead of um, students or something, especially like in emails or whatever, because they're already training us to be as professional as possible. And like uh, that, obviously with your experience is reflected in the, in the actual industry and like what you've seen externally from the university, which is really interesting. Um, tell me a little bit more about like, one of the projects that you've had to do this this year and like how how that's sort of gone down for you oh well it, de- it depends do you want a good project or a bad project <laughs> one of your favorite ones i think is probably oh. better <laughs> <laughs> okay well one of the modules we get in third year is um it's kind of a continuation of a second year module and it's where we work with um external clients Mm-hmm. So in second year, you have a project with the vault where you're where you've got to go out and find a musician and develop an EP with them. Um, and that that's great fun for many <laughs> reasons, um, good and bad. Um, yeah. um, advice for that is do not work with a musician who lives at the other end of the country, because that's just more complex than it needs to be. Um, okay. But um, we continue that this year in a module that's I believe it's beyond production. And that over the course of that module, we're put in contact with a number of different um, external, we're given a number of external clients to work on different projects. And what's what's nice about these projects is, is in the first two years, you're kind of very much pointed in the direction of music producer. I want to be a music producer. I want to work in a studio. And you kind of get to this point in third year where you've got to kind of turn around and go, um, you know, there are actually lots of other jobs I can do as well, which these skills work in. So you'll turn around and go, oh, I can work in game audio, I can work in television, I can compose, I can record live. You know, lots of different things which require these skills. And so we got to do, uh, we were given three, so we had to do a radio, do a radio imaging project. And we had to do a composition for a TV advert and a composition for a short film. Okay. And, uh, and one of my things, my major project this year was is doing um, doing music to go with video and visual media. So doing these this the advert and the and the short film was a really great experience because I've always kind of struggled to put music just on its own to sit there and go, oh, how should this go? Trying to tell a story with just music, but once you're given the visuals as well, I can sit here and go, okay, at that point it's got to change, yeah. And so when I think my favorite had to be the Christmas advert because I mean. People, you say Christmas advert and people go, oh, bloody hell, you're doing a Christmas advert. I can't stand <laughs> yeah. this, you know. Um, you know. And I suppose for a lot of these people, they're probably doing it in summer. So they probably hate it a lot more. Um, luckily, ours was Christmas time. So it kind of wasn't as bad. But, right. I can't, but, you know, I've had projects before where I've never kind of got it. Or you kind of finish a project and you kind of feel like, oh, I could have done a lot better. But this project, I kind of sat down and went, OK, that's it. Oh, that's nice. Da, 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 da. That's nice. And everything just flowed. And just communication with the the client as well was just absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's good because it's not, I think this kind of, you've kind of got this stepping stone for this module as well, where you're working with a client, an external client, but they've worked with students before. Mm-hmm. So whilst, because it's kind of two phases, you're kind of, 
whilst you're doing the project, they're very much in their client mode. So they're going, you know, this needs to be better. You need to improve your mix here. I don't like that. I do like this. And the best clients are the ones which basically tell you exactly what you want to hear. Well, not not what you want to hear, sorry, but they actually they tell you exactly what they want. So they go, I don't like that there. I want this. They don't just go, oh, it needs to sound a bit more bright or it's too fluffy there. Words which mean sod all, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but then, you know, and you go for all this and sometimes these are quite, I mean, the radio one, I kind of wanted to pull my hair out over with, but we got to the end of these projects and you're sitting down with the clients at the end and they kind of, they, at the very end, after they've given you all your feedback, they take off their, their client hat and then they'll sit there and go, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's work, see how you can improve this. How was your communication with me? And you get all that feedback, which from a normal client, you wouldn't. I mean, I worked with a client earlier this year um, who just, after I did a project for him, he just said he wasn't going to be using it and just cut com communications with me. Well, and mm -hmm. just said, oh, you know, thank you for doing all this. Very polite, very, um, very pleasant. But he didn't tell me what, why the reason he wasn't using it was. And it turned out to be nothing important. You know, it was nothing bad that I'd done. It just wasn't exactly what he was looking for. I can't, we kind of gone down the wrong route and so he's going to do it again at a later date. But um, he, when someone doesn't tell you what you've done wrong and they just kind of push you aside a bit, you're just like, what have I done? I don't know. And that's yeah. kind of the equal point. So when someone's there and they go, um, you know, I, I don't know what you think of each of the lecturers at the moment, but you kind of <laughs> it's real. It's you'll kind of get to that point of, you know, in first year you meet some of our lecture, you know, you, you know, turns around and goes, your work's rubbish. You need to improve it. And first year you're just like, he called my work rubbish. How do I cope with this? <laughs> and you get to that point, you kind of get to that point of, yeah, okay, he's, you know, you know, the lecturers have sat there and ripped my work to shreds, told me it's rubbish, you know, pointed out flaws in it. But I can now go away and work on those flaws. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it's, and that is something you, you kind of get to respect with the lecturers a lot, that they're not, they're not just trying to, they're not just trying to tell you everything's great and good and your work's brilliant, you know. They will tell you what's wrong with your work and that it's not up standard. Even when you're like the, I think you've probably realised that the standard of work between first year and third year, it's the same. What what the lecturers are, ex I mean, they understand that you're new, but what they want from you is always the same level of standardness. Um, so they always want you to be the top of your game. That mixes should be perfect, and you know, you're only as good as your last mix is true you know you're only as good as your last project so yeah right. you get yeah kind of gone off a bit topic off there but anyway <laughs> yeah I I agree like I really um I really appreciate when the lectures are more like just very straight to the point as to like what I need to change and like what I've done wrong in my mix or anything like that versus like trying to dance like tiptoe around the actual problem because that's more that's way more helpful for me if you just tell me like this is bad and you just need to like change this and then I like I think if you're going on to this course you have to know like not to get super like emotional about your work too if that makes sense like you can't be like such an artist about it <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I mean I mean you've got you've got to walk that line in the middle I think I I've, I don't think I've ever been on that end of the thing where I'm like oh my work's amazing I've been on the other end where I where I go in and I go my work shit it's rubbish <laughs> it's terrible um yep, and you, and you do you do you do the listening back and you're sitting there going ah oh, that should have been better that should have been it and that's kind of the opposite point then when your lecturer sits down and goes actually this is what you've done right this is where it's all gone wrong right yeah, yeah. and what what i've quite entertained on our course is is that i mean first and second years you kind of get in there and it, you know i my, my year group's brilliant because we you know there's only we you know because we're all sm small uh, class class sizes mm -hmm. we know you know you know the lecturers really well and you get to that you know we're in a small room small number we can we talk with our lecturers we're not in a hall of a hundred where you occasionally get one email and then 15 minutes of their allotted time at which point you're kicked out of the office you know with risk efficiency um but you get to know them and so you get you kind of get to this point where and if you build up if you get to know the lecturers, and I think this is brilliant because we're in an art subject, you know, although, you know, you'll get, as soon as you start this degree, you'll get to the jokes of, oh, you're doing music production. That's not a real degree. Yeah. Well, we do a lot more work than everybody else, really. You know, yeah. um, 
people who are like, oh dear, I'm just, I've got to read this book. Well done. I've got the research module I'm doing and I've got to write do, third year. You're doing an entire album, you know, 45 minutes of audio, which isn't fun. I, I mean, I found it hilarious with my, my friend who, he was doing a guitar course, so it's slightly different, mm-hmm. but he was, he was talking about his third year project and he was going, oh, it's so hard. I've got, I've got to create an EP. Uh, oh, right. That's, that's your third year project. Oh, I'm doing that second year. Okay, what have you got to do on that? Oh, you've just got to play guitar on three tracks. Right. Okay. <laughs> We've got to produce it. We've also got to perform on it if we have to. We've got to get the singer who's down in Brighton all the way up to York. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, and yeah. You, know, you kind of get to that point where you do a lot more. Um, but you kind of get to that, going back to my point again. I said I'd ramble. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. You, this you, is you get to that yeah, you get to the point where you're lecturers where it's not, you know, not the point where you're just like, they're just telling you things and you're taking their word for it. We've got to that point now where we can go, a lecturer will say something and we will, we can actually, you know, our input, our responses are now a lot more valued. Mm-hmm. So a lecturer says, oh, what's that there? You know, that sounds bad. And we can come back to it and say, well, actually, in this genre, it's more like that. I've listened to it. Here's an example. They'll go away and listen to it. And um, I mean, you you get an you get a moment of pride when you can do something better than the lecturer. It that's <laughs> ama- you know, amazing when you can sit when the lecturer finally sits there and goes, "Oh yes, sir, I love I love this piece of software which I previously hated." Um, you know, that's that's one of our ones at the moment in our year group. Um, but you get to. And once you kind of get to that feel with the lecturers as well, you 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 find out you're learning a lot more stuff and they're continuously learning. So your lecturers kind of adapt to your year group. Right. So uh, and because you're in such small numbers, they adapt to they kind of they know you on a personal level. They know what you're good at. They know what you're bad at. So they will kind of, you know, they'll get, to, you know, as you move through the years, you'll get to third year and they'll be helping you directly with the stuff you want. You know, they won't be trying, they'll kind of get to that point of going, oh, he won't, he's not interested in that genre of music. We won't try it. We'll get him interested in that. We'll show him things. Um, and I mean, that's been great for me because, um, uh, excuse me for one second. No, no worries. Uh, yes, Josh, I forgot, I forgot I was on Discord. Uh, this is, um, I'm talking to someone else on Skype currently. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'll have talked. I'll be on in a bit. Borderlands is almost downloaded now, so <laughs> I'll we might see you. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I was on Discord at the same time. I was just sitting up because I was testing the audio earlier because I'm on my laptop, so I was ch- checking it's all coming through. And so, yeah. Um, I remember where we left off. Um, I was probably saying something weird about my lecturers. Um, <laughs> No, I think, I think yeah. you were saying that like uh, the lectures sort of adapt to your group, and especially when you come into third year, they're yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, and they they try and help you on a gen genuinely personal level, but well, not so personal that it's unacceptable. But they'll they'll try and help you with anything you're trying to work out, you know, for the course. So, um, throughout you know these years, um, I've been put in touch with um, a, a guy named Paul Bailey. Uh, you'll, uh, if you haven't met him already, he'll be showing you classical recording second year. We did it. It might be different oh, for you. Yeah. I don't but, think I've met him yet. No, he's a uh, he's lovely. Um, he's an ex. So he's an ex Abbey Road engineer. So he worked at Abbey Road uh, late nineties, early noughties. Um, and he he works on classical. And as that's the area I'm interested in, I was put in contact with him, and I've worked on a number of projects around York with him. Mm. And you kind of get to that point where the lecturers are going, yeah, I know he'll be good at that. I'll put him in, suggest a project which is good for him. You right. know, I've, I've been um, been suggested to work with a number of people on different things, which has been really, really good for me. Because um, that's, I far more enjoy doing work, which I feel is actually work than is just university work. Right. Because I think there's this general... Thing. and it's it's a university so you'll share it with everyone else in the entire uni you'll be sitting there going why am i doing this i hate it, it it's not going to amount to anything 
Um, but so when you're given projects which you can use and go, OK, I can point out to people that this is work experience. When I leave here, this is valid. You know, you might even get paid for it. You know, you know some of my colleagues on my course, um, one of them, um, I don't know if you'll, you might maybe talking to him as well, but um, <laughs> he got um, during his time at uni. Um, so a guy came in to talk to a second year who used to be a student um, who's now working at a games a games company doing di uh, like editing the dialogue to go in un into games right. um, and he basically he came in to chat to us on one of the industry days and my my colleague he'd, he'd started doing a bit of business editing podcasts um, and then he decided he just decided one day that he he he'd contact the guy we'd met and he contacted him and said um, does the company you're working for have any jobs and he was like, yeah, yes, we have jobs going. And so he's now doing working and doing his degree at the same time for third year. So, That's cool, yeah. It's, I mean, it's stupidly impressive. I don't think I could at this point manage a job and university at the same time. But, you know, that's the level of kind of where, you know, options are made open to you. Um, and I think that's that's an interesting point as well for the degree as a whole, like, we're in arts degree, which is quite nice because you kind of get to the end of the degree and you can actually all the work you've done during university. That's work. It's not university work. It's stuff you've done. So you can hold that up and go, um, here's the work I've done, you know, show it to future clients and stuff. Because uh, kind of at the end of the day, people want to see your portfolio a lot in this right. business. So they want to see what you've worked on before, who you've worked with, what projects you've done. Oh, can I ever listen to that project? Um which is great um, in a way, because especially for this third year project, you know, we, we're given the option of doing for our major project. It's 45 minutes of audio, but that 45 minutes of audio can be anything you want it to be. You know, you know it's got to be achievable, obviously, but, you know, you can go away and go, oh, you know. So for, for me, for example, I really wanted to work. I've always wanted to kind of do, you know, orchestral recording. And I'd love for that to be in with soundtracks, soundtracks or classical music. And so I had to look at this and go, OK, I can do those kind of orchestral recordings where I am. It's a bit hard to find orchestral performers. So I thought, mm. OK, let's switch this. You know, and situation now has made that impossible. But, you know, <laughs> so I sw switch it around now. I'm doing audio. I'm composing to go with um, visual media. So I've managed yeah. to talk to a number of people from um work with a few people, talk to some of my lecturers to get some projects. And I've collected up a big collection of short films, which I'm now writing music for. Okay. And so that's my major project. And that's great because the, I'm, I mean, for me, I've had to find films which are open source and which the, the um, um, directors have allowed me to use. But once this is done, it's not just a, oh, well done, you've now got a degree. It's well done, you've got a degree and you've got an entire album you know portfolio that put up on your website show the world you know when people search you up they'll type in your website come to your website oh look this is what he's done you know he's fresh out of university it'll look to people who've done it he's fresh out of university and done all this right you know? yeah and that's it's a big bonus and so i mean everyone's got to do everything some of the guys on in my year group they've got to do their own music so they've got you know produce their own album you know and a lot of lot of places you can't just be sold oh yeah you're you know and you've got to look at this. I mean, sometimes it's really bad when you look at, if you start looking at anything on this degree as going, uh, it's just university work. I think that's when you start to fail. Right. Yeah. Um, and it, it will happen. You will get to a point, And I think that's with any degree. You'll get to that point where you're like, why am I here? Yeah. As I said before, what am I doing here? Kind of thing. But mm -hmm. when you put that out of your head and go, oh, I'm creating an album. I'm creating this for myself. If someone's marking it, sure, they're marking it and they're going to market it and they're going to say, wow, it's amazing, brilliant, excellent. That's what they're going to do. And that's got to be your mindset going in. And then when you come out, you've you've left with a degree and all this work, which is brilliant. You know? And it's something you're enjoying. You know? We get to do a degree where we get to do something we enjoy, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that totally. I think it's, it is like when I'm working on projects in university, I don't really feel like I'm actually doing work to a degree like it's stressful and it's like I know I have to like get it done but I'm having so much fun like enjoying doing it because I know that I love to like make music and that sort of like that lifts a lot of stress off of your shoulders um 
Yeah, I agree. I think the the perspective from you as a third year is really interesting because you've seen all three years now and you know how to like, you know how um, each sort of year has built up in order for you to like achieve these kinds of things with your film like final project and everything. Um, I, I, th I think yeah. if you're if you're entering this course in first year as well, I think the best thing you can do, and it's I, this is advice for someone who didn't do it. The worst thing you can kind of do is enter the course and go, I don't know what I want to do. Um, right. And it's what lots of students do. And they go, oh, when I finish university, I don't know what I want to do. OK, that's fine. You probably don't. And even but even if you don't know what you want to do, when you when you turn up at university, the best thing for you to think is instead of going, oh, I don't know what to do. Go, OK, pick the most stupid, fun thing you can think of that you want to do. And then just tell yourself you're going to do that, you know. For me, that's telling me I'm going to work with orchestras, you know, and that is, you know, it's my end goal. It's a when you actually look at the probability of that happening, it is stupidly low, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, there's two place, two three places in Britain. You know, the two main ones are Abbey Road and Air Studios, which do orchestral recording for film and game and TV, right? Yeah. And out of that, you know, you know, they most of the engineers they hire, there's probably only about you know, 20 to 30 engineers who do that in Britain. And a lot of them move around the place. You know, unfortunately, I don't live in Hollywood. So, you know, I don't have all of the other story scoring stages where most of them are all moving to nowadays. But, right. you know, I've got to be. If, so my aim is just to go, yes, that's where I want to work. You know, and then just keep going in that direction. Even if you get to third year and you kind of sit there, you know, once you finish the degree, reality can hit you. Reality can hit you and go, oh, that's not going to happen actually i enjoyed that which i did on my degree i'll do that in, i'll have a go at that so you know if i ever wanted to do something else i've always thought that i'd really like to have a go at doing um voiceover recording i always thought that'd be quite cool because it's yeah that you, know, would be. you get to sit there you get to listen to people and you get to chat which i do a lot of to myself um so yeah. um and that I, I always thought that'd be quite good you know and equally there's things you go for your degree and go nope never go near that again um <laughs> not touching it stay away from me uh you know and you'll have some of those things. And that's that's the thing about this course. It, it goes for anyone. You know, we're not an electronic music production degree where that's all you'll do. We're not uh, just recording. We're not just business. You know, it's kind of that. I mean, your, I think you, your modules are slightly different to ours because they, right. they've changed stuff up a bit because you've now got your kind of subsections. But ours was literally music production. We do everything. You know, you go <laughs> yeah. walk in and go, what? OK, what? And I think that scares quite a, I think the reason they've changed it is because that does scare people quite a bit is you walk in and suddenly you're asked to do business and people are wandering around. I mean, I quite enjoy that really. Um, yeah, but you, you kind of get, you kind of get people who are going, who suddenly you start going around going, what business? I didn't sign up to a business degree. I just signed up to music production, but it's such an integral part of music production that you don't see, you know, right. that you need to do that. You know, and lots of these things, turn up and you know and that's you you enter the degree and you go why am I doing this and you get to the end of the degree and you go I'm so happy I did this even if I don't enjoy it I'm happy I did it you know right and it's useful yeah I agree um I feel like uh our like since I'm a first year now like uh what I've heard from many like second and third years is that the course has changed a lot since they've been in uh, first or second year. And I think every, it's like every a good third and, yeah, but equally every third and second year will say that it's like, <laughs> it's like the brilliant excuse when you see, um, when you see first years who are really, I mean, your year group has been, t you know, you let you be going, ah, oh, they're really good for their level. And so you get to the third year and you're sitting there going, I'm struggling. I'm hating it. Let, let, let's throw stuff at them <laughs> you know um, yeah, they, right. they, they will suffer like we have suffered you know? <laughs> I think any university degree you get that you know it's like you know any it's it's like being at school where you're sitting there going oh the teacher didn't teach us properly and stuff like that you know where yeah. you know the, the truth will never be told whether the teacher didn't actually teach you properly or you just weren't paying attention you know there's that <laughs> mixture right. yeah um, I, it does say a lot to you about like how um like how also like the lectures do take into account like what uh previous year groups have like complained about <laughs> and then like put it onto the new like first year course and then that, the that, first year, like the test subjects for the next year that was that yeah that's one of the brilliant things are you part like i don't know are you part of the student 
Yeah, you are a student, uh, what are they called? Like a course rep? Yeah, that'd be a course rep. Yeah, yeah, I, I am, and um, so is Tony. That's kind of embarrassing, because I probably did go to a meeting with you at some point um, about that, but that's one of the good things where you get, you know, I mean, the SU at, you know, kind of SUs at universities, unless you're a really social person who goes along and goes, oh, yeah, I want to join in everything, and which I am not. Um, yeah. you know, they go they go along and they want to help people and they're really bubbly. And when you're not like that, they kind of don't do anything for you. If you're like that, they do tons for you and they're absolutely amazing. But um, I mean, that's the thing. Student reps, they're kind of set up as a uni, a union thing. So you go along and you ways to improve the university. But I like the fact that on our course, we don't just use our reps for that. You know, they we get yeah. to go along, we get to talk, sit with the lecturers and we literally get to, you know, you get to, we get to sit there and praise them or slag them off and they've got to take it and write it down. So, um, yeah. right. <laughs> which is, and the fact they do take what you say into account. I mean, a lot of the equipment we now have, that's on student recommendation. And right. that's, yeah. and I think lots of students don't realise that and they don't kind of see the point of going, asking for things. But if you do ask for stuff on this course, it does happen. And, you know, we have guitars in the bunker now because we asked for them. You know, things get fixed around the place because we ask for them to be fixed. You know, when, you know, when the drum kit, when the drum skins need replacing, we say we can go to the technicians, go, we need the drum skins replacing. And they'll go, OK, it might happen then and there. And it might take a bit of time, but it will get done. You know, yeah. everything, you know, people said they weren't too keen on the, the interface we we're using upstairs in the in uh, 102. You know, they said it was, you know. Yeah, it's a lovely interface, but it's confusing for what we do up there. So they went, OK, we'll change it so you guys can do all your work in there. And that that's something you just don't get on lots of courses. Right. You know, and especially especially in bigger groups, you know, when, when you're doing stuff with hundreds and hundreds of students, changing one thing could possibly, you know, you, you basically want to do broad things which make everybody happy, kind of everybody. It doesn't make everyone super happy, but it doesn't make anyone angry either. And that's what they do in these big places. But here they can literally go, you know, I was looking for some, I, I had to have sample packs. And when you're looking for orchestral sample packs, they cost a fortune. Yeah. You know? um, and I want to do a lot of my music is using those packs. And I don't have 800 pounds to spend on, you know, BBC symphonic orchestras and stuff. You know, right. students don't have that. So, you know, I, you, I mentioned that to the lecturers and, you know, they noticed and they say, oh, yeah, we've been thinking about it for a while. This year we have Albion One on our system. I can now do that work. Okay. That option is now available for us. You know. Yeah. That's. Yeah. You know, they'll work around you for as much as possible. You know, as long as you're, you know, you're not, you know, destroying the equipment or, you know, messing up spaces or being rude to people, they'll always help you out. It's, you know, brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, I I didn't actually realize that a lot of the stuff that we have in the studio is because students have requested it. But like that does show a lot um, that it's really interesting that we like they try to like take that into account and try to make sure that we have everything that we need, especially since a lot of students come onto this course not knowing like how to play an instrument or some sometimes there's those occasional people who don't know how to play an instrument or they don't know. Um, they don't have their own equipment to bring and then we have like the location rigs you can rent out or like the um the guitars that we already have or like the instruments that we already have in the studio which is really interesting yeah um, i i think like things like the location rigs for me have been an absolute god for send you know um because whilst i was i mean given what now i've had to yeah there's there's two sides to this a little bit but yeah, the university provides you everything you will ever need to, to complete your degree. These about three years, which I've been there, they've if I've needed equipment, I've been able to access it. You know, yeah, you know, right. And that's yeah, that's that's again like something to do with like the room, you know, the rooms we've got in our booking system. So, I mean, when we want a room to go work with, we can just book it out. And you know, there's small restrictions. I mean, it's three hours a day per room you can book into. Yeah. And that, you know, I've done entire days where I've where I've booked in three hours in one room and I've just moved rooms systematically. Right. You know, started in a mastering suite into the next room into the bunker and done entire yeah. days like that. Um, <laughs> you know, and you can, you know, the fact the fact that I've just you know I've been given access to it. We're we're given access to those facilities. We said, yep, go in. And the fact the university is very much on you know, especially well our course 
um, lecturers, really. They're more like, there's spaces here. You know, there's a, that's a 20 grand set of speakers on the wall there. Come in and use them. You know, don't, yeah, sit, at, yeah. don't sit at home on your, you know, your dying MacBook with a pair of Apple AirPods, AirPods in or whatever they are. Um, <laughs> you know, come in and use a friggin' 20 grand set of speakers. And so that's, that's what I do, you know. Um, and that's what's given to you here is the fact that you can just come in and if the space is free, you go in and use it. You know, right, why, yeah. why give up the opportunity you know, with the location rigs? If there's one free, I tend to take one home to work on because it's got logic. It's got pro tools. It's got all the sound packs I need on it. And then I can go sit at home and do some work as well on days when I frankly don't feel like one walking into uni. Um, as well, and when you, when you think about that, you know, you're being given, you know, one of the latest MacBooks, um, you know, um, what is it? It's a Firefest, not Firefest. I can't remember what the brand is now. Well, it's really friggin' stupidly expensive interfaces, which I think are slightly too expensive. Oh, the name's gone. Can't remember. But, you know, you're being given everything, you know, to take out with you. You've got over six grand's worth of equipment that you're just wandering around York with. No one, you know, it's quite funny wandering around York and going, people don't notice that I'm carrying... Yeah, you know, six grand's worth of equipment. You know, the, right. only, only, the only downside of that is the fact that it, it's in a black a black um, Pele case. And when I'm wearing a black coat in winter, it probably looks like I'm an assassin walking around. Um, <laughs> it probably yeah. is not a good one. But, you know, the fact that I can do that and the university trusts us and the technician trusts us to take these this equipment out and just use it, you know, is frankly something you're probably not going to find elsewhere. You know. Right. And I think part of it is, is, you know, there's that level of, I know who you are, I will find you if you break it, you know, <laughs> bit of, yeah. bit of Liam, a bit of Liam Neeson there. Um, right. But, um, you know, I mean, I've got friends who've been to some of the, you know, kind of the bigger music institutions, and they've got far more money behind them, they've got a lot more advertising and marketing presence, you know, look at us, we, you know, stars come from us, and, you know, I could name them, I could say what i want I, I went to look around some of them and i wasn't but they you go to the you go to their open days and they go yes look at our look at our studio it's a professional studio um you know it's got a big ssl desk in it it's professional it's got the glass it's got the guitars it's got fancy carpet on the floor um you know they do that and then and they sell you all this stuff and they tell you how amazing their equipment is and how up to date they are and how how your lecturers are going to be these professionals from the industry. Yeah. And you get to that point of, yeah, you, yeah, you've got this amazing studio. You can use it for one hour when you've booked it in, in advance, in two weeks in advance, once a month. Yeah. Then it's like, what's the point? You're not getting the information. You're not getting the yeah. things you need. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And then, and then they're like, I remember one of my friends saying they, the, the place he went to, he were, you know, it was a professional studio as well. And the, the university kind of got to this point where they were like, oh, they just cancelled a load of students' bookings because it's a working studio. They had someone right. they had someone coming in to work and they were like, oh, we need this time, we'll pay extra. And so they kicked a load of students out. And you're sitting there going, no, that's not... And again, yeah. it's, the, it's the same with the lecturers and the teachers, you know. You know oh, yeah, this guy's worked with such and such, he's amazing, you know. Oh, he. Oh, look, he's gone because they're busy. You know, these people they do get in credit to themselves. They're busy people. You know, right. you get, you get. They they're here for two hours and then they've got to dash. They you know, they might be on the phone to someone. They can't sit and talk to you. Yeah, oh, there's other things to do. You know, you know, I'm kind of you know, you know, when I'm in the department, the lecturers kind of need to try and hide in their rooms a little bit because I will wander in and chat to them. You know? <laughs> yeah. you know? Right. You know, I. You know, if I really need something sorted, I will w lie in wait and ambush a lecturer and go, hi, I need this information. And they'll go, oh, crap, I've walked into Fergal here again. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, eventually you get, you know, and you can, you can just go and talk to them. I mean, all our all our studios are within, you know, just a few feet of the lecturer's offices. Yeah, they'll yeah. pop their they'll pop their head in and listen to what you're doing. Yeah, they'll go, oh, what's that? Can I have a listen? Oh, that's cool. Or they'll go, what the hell are you doing in here? You know, <laughs> so that, yeah. that, that sounds terrible. You know, that's something, you know, even when I'm just in a studio, just listening to music, for no, you know, because it's free, I was just like, well, I could go home, listen to music, or I could sit in a studio, 20 grand speakers, listen to music, you know. It's yeah. not a no-brainer, really. I mean, maybe you can make yourself a cup of tea and have, 
um, sit on a very comfy sofa at home, although you're in student accommodation, so probably not. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, or you can sit here and do that. So that's that's kind of the way my brain works on it. Right. Yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, I feel like especially since we have such a small course and it's more like uh, sort of we have more of a community type feel and it's more like uh, collaborative, especially like in York, um, you like you might have like a lot of more a lot more like of a music scene in like a bigger city. But in York, you have like a smaller music scene. It's more intimate, like more intimate spaces where you can um, find people playing on the streets like busking or you can find people um, you can find people like just in small bars and stuff like open mic nights are like there's tons of them and everything but that is actually probably easier to make connections than it would be if you were in like a big city where everybody has like a stage to play on if that makes yeah. sense yeah, yeah. De de definitely with that I mean I think that's just kind of like the York feel like York's small and friendly and you can pretty much stop most people and they'll you know ask for directions they'll point you in the right direction you know everyone. I mean, it sounds sounds like I'm trying to be a tour guide for York. Yes, come come to York. Everyone's friendly. Um, no, yeah. But it, it is a bit like that, and people generally are happy to talk to you. And I mean, you know, you're saying about people playing in the streets, I mean, that's one of the advantages that you're, if you're a music student in York, the fact that you don't have to buy a busking license. So you can just go out yeah. into the streets and just play. Go out into the streets and annoy the hell out of some, some store. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll see little... Uh, occasionally if they if you can tell where a busker has been standing where they've annoyed a store because they occasionally might be a, a notice saying please do not play here <laughs> you know right yeah occasionally it's, i think it was a while ago as a bagpipe player and you're sitting there going you know I, I walked past i think it was at 10 in the morning when i went into uni and he was still playing at three when i walked back and i was sitting there going oh some stores have been listening to this guy playing for you know a good five six hours or so yeah. right yeah but you know york you can do that you know yeah, I and, it's, it. and it's you know you're right it's not a massive music scene but then again if you wanted bigger music scenes we're not that far from other cities you can head to exactly yeah, yeah. even even if you're actually that's that's a upside upside for york uh, for things you know you know you're, it's only about 20 quid down to you know 15 20 quid down to london mm -hmm. on a train ticket you know it's a direct line down you get straight into is it king's cross king's cross yeah, yeah. King's cross. um yeah. And that's it. Then you're in London and you didn't have to be near London. You didn't have to pay pay the prices. You know, one of my friends down in Guildford, he's paying a fortune for his accommodation. Um, you know, and part of the reason why is because it's proximity to London. You know, right. You know, he's, and he's like, oh, I can get to London in five minutes, you know, for about 10 pounds. Yeah. Like, yeah. OK. It might cost me a little, you know, a five or more to get there, but I can yeah. still get there. And I'm not paying a fortune for my accommodation every day, you know. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It's so much more expensive to live down there and, like, in the bigger cities anyway. But, like, York is definitely more affordable to a degree. Um, what do you think, uh, like, maybe we can talk a little bit more, too, about, like, the student life in York. Like, what's your experience as a student there and then also in the SU? Like, how do you like the SU and, like, what they do? The you're asking the completely wrong person for that. Um, um, student life. I mean, I think, I mean, everyone I've met and everything I've done with the SU and everyone's been absolutely friendly. So I can't really you know, say anything bad about them. I can say a lot of bad stuff about myself, which is probably the reason why I don't socialize as much. But, you know, um, no, it's great. Yeah, there's lots of society. There's yeah, it's lots of societies. And, I mean, that, that's one of the things which people don't get as well. I mean, there's, you know, obviously there's two universities in York, two main ones, which is York St. John and the Univer, you know, Uni of. Um, and what you don't realise is that we can also join the societies up at Uni of. So okay. You can, you know, it's a bit of a trek out. You know, it's a bit of a walk up there. Not so much if you take a bus, but you head up there and you've got all of their societies you can join as well. You can join, you know, you can go to their bars, you can... They do what's brewing is actually up there. They do the student cinema, which is quite good. So if you don't want to play full price for studio uh, cinema tickets, mm -hmm. they, they I think it's in their science building. They they go and when I think it's just before a lot of the films come out, but they they project them into the science like the science theatres. And you know it's not amazingly comfy, but you're allowed to bring snacks in and just sit there and 
watch films. So it's quite, you know, even like that's a good thing. And I think that's kind of one of the better things about York is that you can move around these unis, you know, you know, and I think a lot of York St. John students don't always mention this you know, or, right. or, you, or even know it happens. Like, you know, go, you know, uni of exists here. They're students, you know, they're not just people you meet on a night out, you know, who are just, and then they'll disappear. You know, you can go up and say hello to them at the uni and go, oh, hi, what are you doing? Uh, join their societies, join their clubs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't actually know that. I haven't been up to the uni of yet, but um, cause, just because it's a, it's a trek out there, like <laughs> you said, but <laughs> I'll have to go up there and, and look around. Um, how about, like, what do you have, like, top three tips for people coming on to this course? Like, what would your top three tips for them be? Oh, <laughs> I could I could probably fill a book with that. I'm sure many of my colleagues could as well. Um, yeah. So I think kind of top tips you're looking at. I think is first, and it's one which people go. And I think especially as music production students, they'll go, "Oh, I don't need to know that." Um, it's definitely learn to play a kind of a very a melodic instrument, or um, you know, or, or at least play an instrument because and know the music theory because it's going to help you out so much. Right, um, and which a lot of music producers go, oh, I create electronic music. I don't need to know this. That's, and you see adverts for it online. You know, oh, I don't know any music theory, but I can do this because I've got a chord pack. That is utter bollocks. Right, because you get to this when you actually understand that you know there's no divide between the fact that you're an electronic musician and music theory and classical instruments and actually how music works mm -hmm. um you'll notice that you all your work just starts getting so much better yeah um i mean as a comp I, I don't the one thing i regret is not learning to play piano properly because you know, everything i do uses a midi keyboard you know so i can't just you know i watch composers go you know you watch a lot of composers online going oh this is how you compose they they pull up a piano and then they play something which sounds amazing first time they tell you it's rubbish and you're sitting there going i couldn't do that yeah and that's because because they've learned the instrument they know what they're doing and lots of people go oh i don't think i need to do that it's learning an instrument and learning that even if it's something like drums you know when you start putting rhythms in on stuff it becomes so much easier bass your bass lines you know it's and it takes a lot equally on an upside as well it means you don't have to find the musician if you're a good musician on that it gives you a lot more independence to work on projects on your own yeah right. you can create you don't have to go find your bass player to go and play bass and that's a you know drummers although i have lots of drummers no one else <laughs> can find drummers but i find drummers i know about <laughs> seven seven drummers or something it, wow, it's yeah. stupid yeah i, I mean not all of drums. them are at york st john but drummers Everywhere drummers can't find a guitarist to save my life though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean those are, that's a good tip. Those are good. <laughs> that makes um, sense. What other tips? I think, you know, don't write off modules as well because you don't you think they're not necessary. I mean, you know, the business and the research module, lots of people come onto the music course go, Oh, I'm a musician, I don't need to know about the history. You know, you don't need to know about it, but again, it helps, you know, and it's like the business, you know. Yeah, it's not exactly what you thought it was going to be, but the business side of things and the planning, I mean, you've been subjected to all of this this year. Right, um, yeah. But, you know, well, I think the first module you do is time planning, isn't it? We mm -hmm. have to write the time time yeah. planning review, you know, go yeah. and find some systems. I mean, I, I found, what did I find? I found like a really old one to write about yeah. as time management systems because i thought it was in i quite like finding old stuff because i find it really interesting and also it's historical context and reading this book and writing about it, it's like if you can't do this just just send a message to your secretary she will do it for you and you're just like man this book is outdated you know? <laughs> yeah this is not right <laughs> if, if i'd say if i'd sent that into the lecturers well this book says i should have a secretary to do all my work for me yeah oh, thank you no um but i mean like get to that point where time planning and you're like oh what does time planning have to do with music production or planning in general oh i don't know you've got to get this and this and this to your client all done at the same time you've got to get that musician into a studio actually in a state to play something yeah right. it's like when you get yeah you know, i think it's one of the, the first things you'll probably end up doing it 
it's like one of the things from school as I always remember it's like you find a drummer to play something your drummer would turn up and go you got drumsticks it, well, you're a drummer why have you not turned up with drumsticks yeah yeah, yeah. I think that that's an important, yeah, that's kind of an important thing as well. Find musicians, find them early on and keep them. Find good ones and don't be, don't be worried about being picky with your musicians either. I think that's a good way of destroying your work is right. going, oh I, know, oh, I know this person, so I'm going to use him as a musician. And I think that's one of the things a lot, kind of quite a few people do is they go, it's like, it's like guitarists. You find a guitarist who tells you they can play bass. And they just tune, yeah. You know, they just turn their guitar down with auto tune, and you're just like, no, yeah. yeah when you find if, if a guitarist offers to play bass, throw them out your studio, you know. If anyone other than a drummer offers to play drums, throw them out the studio, yeah. You know? <laughs> and you kind of, it sounds really harsh what you're doing, and you're telling them, yeah, you because know, they might they might be your friend, you might really, you know, you might get on with them really well, but if they can't play an instrument well, or they're, you know or they're annoying you in the studio. I mean, I throw people out the studio because they're annoying me half the time. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I quite struggle to work with, unless I know the, like, the engineer really well, I don't work with them. I mean, there's one guy I just won't work in the studio with because, you know, he's amazing, but he doesn't take everything seriously. You know, he's amazing fun to get along with, but when I'm trying to get something done, he's like, oh, let's try this. And I, he then goes and moves all my favours. You know, no, I've got to keep them there for a reason. So. Right, yeah. My, yeah. Yeah, my points are getting very convoluted. They're just chaining off each other randomly. Um, I can't... Anything else? Uh. <laughs> just... Just uh, try... To, I think it's just work hard from the offset. So, and also, I think that's the big thing as well, is not... I think, I think it's not just for this course, but all students as well, is not to, not to go into shutdown mode or fail mode as soon as they start piling the work up. Right. I think, and it's it's harder at the moment, I think, because there's lots of, you know, nowadays we're more aware of people's mental health. And rightly so, you've got to kind of, you know, you can't, you know, if people are stressed out, you can't just keep pushing them to work. But equally, uh, when you start working in this business seriously, uh, you know, actually after university, you're going to mm -hmm. realise that there isn't a student's union there who's going to come and pat you on the back and tell your lecturers off for pushing you too hard, you know. Yeah. You, you, know, you can't get to the end of a project and go, oh, I'm, I didn't get it turned in properly. Can I have an extension? You know, if you're working with clients and stuff, you've got to get it done or you don't get paid. You know, right. if this is bad, you will be told it's bad. And I think that's the thing is you've just got to get your head down from straight away from first year and get on with the work. Your lecturers, I think you've been subjected to far more work than we have, were in our first year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I've not, and I think this year, but yeah, the second years have work did not have as much work as you've been given currently. But kind of that, and also you get more into the flow of working when you keep doing it. If right. you have a break, if you have a break, it's like the summer break is the worst thing. So you know, you're you, you find it so much harder to start working again. And then when it gets heavier, you start going into there's too much work. I can't do it. You right. have got to. You kind of got to take the work in, do it to the best of your abilities, and then throw it out again. You want. Um, yeah, it's the the old adage in a way of you can, you will never finish a project. No projects are ever finished. Yeah, you know, they're just put to one side. Right. And that's, but I think that's what you've got to be prepared for. It's hard work from the offset, and just to keep doing it. Yeah, you know, some projects you do will be crap probably. Yeah. You know, always equally, if you've messed up, go. What didn't I like about this? Well, okay, and then adapt. You know, choose who you're working with for reasons and you know if you actually do keep working hard and you take note of what you're doing everything will start to be getting better you know as soon as you stop practicing then you're going downhill straight away right yeah I agree with that that those are good tips that makes sense I mean I feel the same way about like working with people and um like being collaborative but also like making sure that you're specific about what you want from different musicians and stuff like that because um it is hard to like it is kind of hard to find the musicians that you really want to work with but everyone comes from somewhere everyone knows like different connections like you can always reach out to other people and don't be afraid to network a little bit more than yeah. what you originally think the, the, the networking thing's good as well because you kind of it's, yeah i think first year you kind of get to that point of just get you kind of in your little bubble and i was kind of still in it in my second year yeah yeah and weirdly i'm I'm not one of the most social people in my year groups, yet I probably know more musicians than anyone else. Yeah. Right. Because I've had to find them. Yeah. 
you kind of get to that point with third year where I've kind of gone, okay, I would, you know, first year, like, oh, I don't want to send an email to someone because I don't know how to word it and they might think I'm weird and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, procrastination for prior, you know, you know, just literally send people emails saying, hi, will you, you know, I mean, I met my saxophonist um, at a, up at a concert at York Uni. I just was there and I just, he was sitting next to me, started chatting, and he just came and performed on one of my tracks. Well, surprisingly, I don't like electronic music. That was an electronic track. It did quite yeah, well, actually. I was impressed by that. Um, not, I wouldn't do it again, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've met him, and then, so now, yeah, despite the fact that he's a good musician, he's you know, a really good friend up at York. Uh, when I'm at uni and he also puts me in touch with a lot more of the musicians I need from the University of York itself you know right. I need classical musicians there's lots up there that, that's the way I've been doing them so don't really don't fear networking there's nothing especially with emails as long as your emails are polite and I think what was it someone who came in to talk to us the other day was saying also never just ask people to do stuff for you in emails always say what you're going to do for them because no one wants to hear no one wants to hear oh you want something for free Never work for free as well. That's another thing. Yeah. But you've probably seen that thing yet. Yeah. So no, have, I've seen um, that. <laughs> have you seen the um the website with the should you work for free? Uh, I don't know. I feel like oh yeah, I have seen like the yeah. diagram where it's like yes or no. <laughs> is it is it is it your mum? Yeah. Yes. Work for free. Um, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no. But that's don't don't fear networking. The more you do it, I mean, I've kind of got to the point now where I've just contacted. You can contact random companies as well. And as long as you're polite and you're understanding enough, they will just go, yeah. Or they might just go, no, actually. They might just shrug you off, but that's fine in a way in some cases. If you really want to work for them, though, just keep following them up. Yeah. Right, yeah, just keep bothering them. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I like those. Um, I think the last, the only actual other question that I have is, like, what do you think... Uh, prospective students at home could be doing to prepare if they really want to go on this course? Um, I would probably tell them at this point, you know, this is the time you just get on and work on music, honestly. Learn to play an instrument. Quite, if you've got an instrument at home, learn to play it. I mean, you know, learn some music theory. All this stuff can be done at home. It's better than, you know, playing video games or watching films. Yeah, I'm doing both of those, but that's beside the point. Um, right. Yeah, um, and then just get on. Yeah, you know, it doesn't even need to be. You need to spend money on stuff. If you don't have the money to spend, like for example, you can download Reaper. I mean, at the, at the moment, it's even better because lots of companies are giving away free stuff you can practice with. Right. Yeah. Mess around. And everything. Yeah. So that that's my advice: is just just mess around with music for a week. Try and maybe learn some good practices. Get your files sorted out and that's it really yeah yes. equally i yeah equally i'd just say learn how to cook or something like that because that's just generally useful at uni right yeah, yeah that's, a then, good, that's a good tip honestly <laughs> you you will live off pasta there's nothing wrong with that um yeah. <laughs> but yeah other than that yeah just 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 mess around it's fun it's not hard yeah i agree i mean um all I really could say too is just like not only like learn an instrument, but even maybe look into different software that you can sort of just look at YouTube videos for and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And sort of just at least know like what a compressor is and things like that. Like that's even gonna like put you a little bit further. But um, <laughs> yeah, I agree with like, that. No, yeah, that's great. Thank you. I'm just gonna like stop this recording.